I enjoyed creating the video that you're about to see and genuinely hope it makes your life better. But please remember, please remember, I cannot pay my mortgage with passion. I cannot pay my bills with passion. I do need cold, hard cash. And as we all know, YouTube has become a very hostile place for uh, earning money for content creators. So please think about joining Eli the Computer Guy.com or failednormal.com to get other content that's not necessarily on YouTube and to help support these projects that I do. Hello again, as you know, I am Eli. In today's class, we're going to be doing an autopsy of a desktop PC. So essentially, we're going to go in and we are going to rip apart this desktop PC, take a look at all the parts inside, and give you a better idea of how all of the components go together. So the glass class that I did, I was talking about all the different parts, the CPU, the memory, the storage, the motherboard, blah, 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 blah. And so you have an idea of what all of these parts do. And now that you have an idea of logically what they do, it is good to see how they are physically all put together. So uh, what I did actually for this whole A plus series, um, in order to have a computer I could just bang up and destroy and not really worry about how much it cost, I went to Micro Center. So Micro Center is a local computer shop. And I actually was able to buy this computer for $109. So this is actually, it's a Dell. It's a Dell computer. It has a Windows 10 professional license to it. it is a, it's an Intel Duo or whatever from like five or six years ago has five gigs of storage like or five gigs of ram about 250 gigs of storage got an optical drive basically it's a all-around good machine this is the type of computer i would suggest that you go out to buy in the beginning now i know everybody wants to build their own computer eli eli i don't want to buy some used piece of crap i want to build my own computer well the thing is building your own computer actually gets to be a bit pricey. So this was $109, all told. All told. Optical drive, hard drive, RAM, the whole nine yards. You have to stand, understand, when you go out there to build your own computer, you know, power supply will run you 40 or $50. Case will run you 40 or $50. Hard drive will run you 40 or $50. CPU is going to run you amount of money. So even if you go out and you buy, if, and you basically assemble a low-cost PC, you're going to get a very piss-poor quality PC for somewhere between two to $300. And so you're going to spend that amount of money and it's still going to be a pretty crappy system, to be honest with you. The case, I talked about that in the safety class, right? The, the case is probably going to have all kinds of sharp metal coming off of it. It's just not going to be a good thing. So the nice part is you go out there and you buy a used machine like this, and you can go in and you already know that it works. That's an important thing. Again, in the beginning, when you're learning how to do something, you don't know if a part's dead on arrival or you did something stupid, right? <laughs> Is it is it is it that the power supply failed? You have a bad power supply, or is it that you didn't plug in the power supply the correct way? Right when you buy when you try to assemble a computer from the get go, you, you don't know those things. What's nice about buying something that's already supposed to work is you plug it in, and if it doesn't work, you return it and get another one that does work. Basically, you don't have to start at square one. You have a machine, you already know it has all the stuff it's supposed to have, and then you go from there. The other thing that I do like about going out there and buying a used Dell or used Lenovo. I personally hate HP with a passion. My opinion, my opinion, I hate HP with a passion. But again, if you go out there and you buy a decent refurbished, uh, you know, brand name vendor, is a lot of things like the case. The cases will be a lot better and easier. Like this case, in order to get into it, there's just this little... There's just this little uh, lever up here. You pull the lever and the case opens up. And so one of the nice parts too, as as you're learning how to do things, you're not, well, as I sit here and have to fight with it, you're not having to fight with cases and stuff so much just to get parts to go together, right? So you can learn how to install a PCI card. You can learn how to install an operating system. You can learn all the basic stuff. Once you feel comfortable, then you go and you buy your 1080 Ti graphics card and your insane stuff after, after you've basically killed the hundred dollar computer again and things like education that's what you have to think about hmm. when you're learning how to do what you're doing when you know that electricity can cause a lot of damage to components 
Do you want to learn on a hundred dollar piece of crap system that you're just going to throw it in the recycling bin once you're done? Or do you want to learn on something where the graphics card alone is going to cost you eight hundred dollars? You know what I'm saying? These are kind of questions you have to answer. Uh, so in order to crack into this thing, in order to crack into this thing, I have my handy little screwdrivers here. Again, just a nice little set of screwdrivers like this will do you fine for almost all situations for, for desktop PC support. And then I brought the pliers. I don't think I might need the pliers. Probably don't need the pliers. But it's just nice to have a good set of pliers sometimes when you need to pull out parts. So basically with these, we're going to rip this thing open, take a look at how all of the components go together, and uh, and really show you what makes a desktop PC and what you, should be, what you will be looking at when you crack one open yourself. So this is the desktop PC. We're going to gut quicker than Susan W. guts the hopes and dreams of aspiring YouTube content creators. <laughs> what does that mean? That was kind of mean. I don't mind, though. <laughs> There's a certain point when you're just like, I want to be mean. There's a certain point in life when you're like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to get along. And then there's a certain point when you're like, nah. No, we're, we're to the point that I, that I want to be mean. But basically, we're going to crack this little guy open. So as you can see, it looks like a pretty normal computer. Got your USB on the front. Got your optical drive. Has uh, has a smaller, smaller bay if you want to put something in there. If you flip around, you take a look at the back of it. You can see you have the normal ports going on here. We have a graphics card down at the bottom. Then you got your COM port, your network card, USB, the whole nine yards. So again, although this is an older computer, computer by normal standards it's a it's a rather modern computer and any kind of desktop computer that you're going to be ripping apart more or less is going to look like this like literally if you buy something from like an expensive computer from this year it may look a tiny bit different but i'm going to say a tiny bit different now one thing to realize with this particular desktop computer is that it's what's called a low profile desktop computer so although it's big i mean you take a look at this thing you're like eh. Compared to a lot of the modern stuff coming out, there's nothing about low profile. Uh, this doesn't look like anything that you would call low profile. For a desktop world, it is. Basically, what low profile means is that it's thinner. It's thinner than a normal desktop computer. Why that's going to be important is for your expansion cards. So when we crack this open, I'll show you. But this is the normal size of, of the back plate for an expansion card. So when you have a normal size desktop computer, this is how big the, the, the back plate for the expansion card is. For a low profile desktop, it is that big. It is smaller. So it's, it's sometimes called a low profile uh, desktop or a, a half size PCI card, one or the other. Um, more or less, this doesn't matter for a lot of things with desktop computers other than the expansion card. So I actually added my own graphics card to the system. And so when I did uh, add the, the graphics card, as I'll show you when I crack this thing open, I had to get a low profile graphics card because it simply if it had used this plate, it simply would have been physically too big. Again, this is just one of those things you'll learn as you go in the world, but just keep in mind, if you're looking at a desktop computer and it seems a little thin, and you're gonna want a graphics card or a sound card or any kind of expansion card, you may have to buy a low profile card instead of the regular size card. That's one of those things to be thinking about. And with that, let's crack this thing open. So with this, what's nice is again, we have this little lever on the side. And with that, what's cool is you can just pull the lever and the case pops open. This is what I talk about when you, when I say buying a good case and why buying a good case is valuable, especially in the enterprise world. Now, if you're going to buy a desktop computer, you're going to assemble a desktop computer, and you're really never going to take it apart like ever, 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 then the case, you know... As long as you don't, you know, need a tourniquet while you're putting the thing together originally, uh, you seal it up and you're done, you should be fine. But especially when you're dealing with lab computers, when you're dealing with computers, you're going to be pull, pushing and pulling stuff in a lot. You want a good quality case because it's just so, just being able, I mean, again, if you're new and you haven't dealt with cases, I mean, it's nice that being able to put on or take off the side is literally this easy. With some of them, with some of the cases, the inexpensive cases, you basically have to pull out the pliers and the hammer every time you want to do this. So having something as easy as that, again, right now, 
it may not seem like a big deal, but it really does matter. So now we start taking a look at this thing. And so when we're looking at this from the top, we can start to see what's going on. So this is the motherboard right here. So everybody, everything's connected to the motherboard. This right here, this black thing, basically this is a cooling cowl. So a cowl uh, forces the air to go in certain directions. So underneath this, you can't really see it where you're at, but underneath this, this is the heat CPU heat sink. And so underneath that heat sink is then the CPU. CPU. So I can take a look at it. I can go, okay, so this is the CPU. I look at this. Okay, so this is the optical drive. It tells me it's a DVD writer. Again, depending on how old your the, the desktop you're dealing with is, you should just take a look at this to see what it is. You know, is it just a CD? Uh, CD? Is it just a DVD player? Is it a CD writer? Is it a DVD writer? So on and so forth. Nowadays, everybody, everybody's gone with thumb drives, so it doesn't really matter so much, but this might cause you some issues, especially with these old, these old optical drives. <laughs> I mean, especially because people use them so little, they don't actually use them a lot. You might have a really old optical drive in there. You may have like a 10 year old optical drive that's just gone through a few different computers. And so it may be something like it's, you know, you're like, why, why can't I install the operating system? And then you find out, oh, because I have OS DVDs and this is only a CD player. So you just look at something like that and you can see you've got a power supply here. Uh, you look down here, these are our RAM ram uh, sticks of ram i can look down I, I can see that under underneath the optical drive the hard drive is here and then of course we've got the graphics card right here so i have a basic i have a pretty clear understanding of what's going on you may also see with like enterprise level uh, computers like when you buy dell or lenovo you'll see like little button like this so this is a little button what this does is this detects to see whether the case is closed or not so within bios normally you can configure to say whether or not you want the computer to boot if the case is open so this is just one of those things to realize it exists sometimes you can see there's a little cable here sometimes this can get pulled out or somebody somebody can do something stupid and pull it out and so if you're having a weird like it won't boot or it's giving you weird errors it might be something like this has been pulled out but this is the basic idea of what we've got here so we start looking at this and we start thinking okay so what what are we going to pull out of this first? And so, hey, what the hell? Why don't we pull out the graphics card since we were talking about PCI cards before? Now with this, this has an interesting setup. So normally um, with these, well, I guess I can do it this way. So what we can do is with a lot of these types of, of expansion cards, there'll be screws on top. There'll be screws that go in here. This just uses a little friction thing. This uses a little fr fr friction force thing. And so basically you just pull this up. Now, for PCI cards, there's going to be a little locking mechanism at the bottom. Wow. Can you see this blue thing? You see this blue thing down here? This is a little locking mechanism. So you want to pull that so that it, it's going to release the graphics card. Come on, release the graphics card. Don't screw with me here, Dell computer. Wow, that thing is in there tight. Hold on a second. Come on. Come on. There we go. Ah. So we pull that out. And then now the friction's out, and then we're able to pull out the graphics card. So this is the graphics card. Now you take a look at this graphics card. Now this isn't this isn't cool. This isn't awesome. This isn't a 1080 or a, uh, whatever the hell AMD came out with. This is basically a much older graphics card. What I like about graphics cards like this is you'll notice there's no fan on this graphics card. There's all one big heat sink. So this is one thing you have to think about in the enterprise world, and especially when you're building computers that are much more appliances, you know, they're going to do whatever it is they're going to do, is whenever you put a fan onto a graphics card, you run into the issue of the fan will wear out at some point. It'll get gunk in there. It'll get dirt in there because it's, it's spinning. I mean, it's spinning 20, especially if you put, if it's in some kind of system that's on 24 hours a day, it'll be spinning 24 hours a day. Anything is moving 24 hours a day and at a certain point it will fail. The problem is, is that the fan is on the graphics cards because it needs to cool. As soon as the cooling, the fan fails, well, then the graphics card is going to fail, and then the whole neat thing needs to get repaired. So something to think about is if your desktop PC or your appliance uh, isn't doing anything graphic intensive, and when I mean graphic intensive, I mean intensive. I mean editing video, playing video games, that type of thing. If your computer is basically going to be used as a web browser, 
uh, use for productivity software, anything else, you may think about just getting one of these inexpensive graphics cards that don't have a fan attached because these things will end up lasting much, much, much longer simply because you don't have anything to fail. That's just one of those things to think about. So we put the graphics card over here, and then we take a look at what else is going on. So we're taking a look at this, and so why don't we pull out the optical drive now? Since we're pulling out the optical drive, now with this, it's got these little, it's got these releases. How do I do the release? Oh yeah, pull up on the release. That's one thing. Even though, even though they 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 engineer these things well, sometimes you're not sure what to do. You're like, do I push it? Do I, do I go, oh no, I pull it, right? So if I pull this, this will then release the optical drive for me and I can pull out the optical drive. Now what you see in this particular desktop computer is that the screws that go into the side, they're separated slightly from the side of the, uh, the CD or the optical drive and that allows this whole thing just to slip in basically into the little slides that they have so that you can just click that in pretty easily. Now, depending on what desktop computer you're using, uh, or the or the the case that you have, sometimes you'll you'll screw slides into the side of an optical drive in order to slide it into the case. Sometimes there's nothing at all. There's no screws. You can just simply slide the optical drive into the case and then there's some kind of friction mechanism within the case. But this basically gives you an idea of what's going on. Now with here, you'll see on the back, there's a power connector and the, uh, the hard drive controller connector. And so we just pop those out. And now we've got the optical drive. This is more or less what all optical drives look like. Whether it's a CD drive or a Blu-ray drive, it's gonna look like that. And we put that to the side. And then underneath, what you can see here is that we have the hard drive. So this is the main storage. This is where all the data is stored. And I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not really sure how to pull this thing out right now. <laughs> it's like, okay, so there's, do I pull that up? Uh, yeah, that's a that, this is this is a frustrating part. Like I say, when you're pulling apart computers for the first time, so you're not always sure how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop out I'm gonna pop out the cables. So you pop out the cables, so it's much easier to take a look at what I'm doing. And then from here, oh, there's something on the sides here, so I can do that. Does that do something? How do I get it out? <laughs> not even joking. See, you guys get to see me look like a stoopy head in real time. Ah, there we go. Okay, yeah, and again, this is where this is where I say every case you have to figure out what's going on. So with this, there are these two little tabs on the side. So you push those together. It's kind of hard. You push those together, and then when those are together, then you kind of force it, and then, and then you're able to pull it out. So now we have the hard drive. Again, this is kind of like a non-custom little rack or slider thing, but now you've got the hard drive. So if you wanted to be able to swap this hard drive out, you would just literally, you would unscrew it from this little connection mechanism, put the new hard drive in, slot the new hard drive, install your operating system or whatever. When you take a look at this, you can see, so this is a Seagate hard drive. You can see this is a 250 gig hard drive. You can see what the model number is. So you can go and you can take a look at any of the additional information you need to know. And that's, that's a storage for you. That's what you got going on. Then once you get the storage out, you might as well go and pull out the power supply. So with a power supply, there's always going to be screws on the back, even with well-engineered uh, desktops. Again, you grab your screwdriver. You make sure, no, you do make sure, make sure what screws are going to be taken out. So when you look at this, you're going to see a lot of screws. So you see this screw, and you see this screw, and you see this screw, and this screw. You don't take those out. See, these screws, right, the fan, the fan for the power supply is right here. These screws attach the fan to the case. So if you unscrew those and you don't, eh, it's just a pain. It's not going to kill you. Don't worry. That's not going to kill you. You just don't want to do it. It may damage your power supply. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to look for where the power supply connects to the case. And so for here, we got these two screws. Uh, geez. Come on. There we go. Unscrew that one. Let's see here. There you go. Oop. Come on. Come on, you stupid thing. 
Dun, dun, dun. Come on. <laughs> I'm doing this live. Holy crap. The hell did they do? Okay, there we go. Now it's on screen. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> It's always fun to look like a weakling in front of all these noobs. Okay, so those are unscrewed. So, put this down. Is there anything else that connects this in? Let's see here. What else connects this thing in? Oh, come on. Come on. Okay, so this is the power. This is the connector that goes to the motherboard. So we can pull that out. So we pull that over here. We've got all these wires connected up. So let's unconnect them so we can see what we're looking at. Let's see here. Put that to the side. Okay, so we got power wires. All right, so these are the power wires. And now I'm looking for why this won't pull out of the computer. Hmm. Come on. Why won't you pull out of the computer? Come on. Seems to be connected somewhere else. Huh. Okay, that's there. Maybe I just pull straight up. Um uh, Hmm. Well, that's not connected. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not working. So we're going to pull out a couple of other things and see if when we pull out a couple of other things, we can figure out why the power supply is not coming out. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there something there? Nope, that's not there. Huh. So, okay, that disconnects from there. I feel like there should be like a little mech, there should be like a little release mechanism or something. Come on. Come on. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. So with that, what we can do is to make things life, life a little bit easier, we can pull out these SATA cables. So these are SATA cables that go from the hard drive to the, to the hard drive to the motherboard and to the optical drive. So you just pull those out so you're not dealing with those. You put those to the side. Take a look here, and got the power thing. So we have the RAM. So basically, in order to pull out the RAM now, all you have to do is you push the little the little tab things. You pop out the RAM, pop out that RAM. Then you do the tabs here, and you pop out that RAM. Okay. So we have we now have the RAM is out. So that's just basically what a nice little RAM stick looks like. Then past that, now we'll get to the the CPU. And so with the CPU, we'll go in. And basically, the first thing that we'll do is we'll remove the cowl. So now, depending on what kind of desktop computer you're dealing with, there may be a cowl over the CPU, or there may just be a large heat sink. It all kind of depends on what kind of system. So I'm going to crack this open. Um, and then, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> okay, that all came off a lot easier than I thought. So... So depending on what kind of heat sink you have on your CPU, uh, a lot of times the, the heat sink itself will secure uh, to different points kind of on the motherboard, and then you, then you have to release all of those things. Apparently with this, the cowl mechanism and the heat sink is all one. So when I pulled this off, you got everything. You'll notice here, if you can look at it, there's this gunk. This is this Arctic Silver. This is the CPU compound paste. So this is kind of like, it's like a schmutz. It's a stuff that you put on the CPU. And then when you when you press the CPU together with the heat sink, it allows the heat to transfer uh, much more effectively. So we'll put that over here. And then when we pull, pull the, the CPU out, all you do, uh, once you have the heat sink off, is there's usually some kind of lever like this. You pop off the lever. Then you pop up the little door, and then you can just grab the CPU. And there you go. Look at that. That is a beautiful, nice little CPU there. Again, again, 
theoretically, if you're doing this by the book, you should have an anti-static band, and you should be doing this on a, on a static mat. But as you can see, I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't really worry about it. Um, it's never really been a problem. Again, I know a lot of people that literally take CPUs, and they literally just throw them into Rubbermaid containers, and they almost always work. But that's a CPU for you. So let's put that off to the side. And then we'll be pulling out the motherboard. So we pop that there. Okay, so from there we have you know, this cable. I'm not actually sure what this cable is. This is some kind of cable for the fan mechanism and the other things going on the, the front of the computer. So we'll pull this out. This is a non-standard. Whatever this is, is non-standard. Oh, this is the cable that controls your USB connections and your front uh, speakers and such. So what you should realize is the front USB connections and the, the headphones and the microphone, they're... Almost every desktop, there will be a cable that runs from those connectors back to the motherboard. This is how this particular desktop does it. Just realize different desktops do it different ways. Um, we'll just pull that out. So that's that, just that cable. Getting down here, now we have the motherboard. Uh, before we pull the motherboard out, I will pull. So this is the little connector. This is the wire that goes from the button here to the motherboard so I'll pull that out and put it to the side and then beyond that this whole little mechanism for the expansion cards that can actually get pulled out in this particular one and we'll put that to the side so that we can now get to the motherboard oops there's also a little power connector over here pull that out and then put that to the side all right and so now we're down to the motherboard now that we're down to the motherboard again we take our uh, Trusty Phillips head screwdriver. And we uh, we pop out one screw. And then we take another. There we go and grab the uh, next screw. And then you go. And the thing is, for these screws, you gotta look. You gotta look, cause you think you got all the screws. You think you got all the screws, and then they'll just seem to have a screw in like a completely what seems like a random place. So do that screw. And we'll do this screw. And then, oh, see, there's that screw right there. And like, why is there another screw right there? Oh, well, because there is. I got that. This will actually be good. So now that all this is apart, then I can use all these different parts for the classes that'll be coming up. I hadn't thought about that. Literally hadn't thought about that to write this second. But it's like, oh, look, I can now show you people a motherboard. Uh, then we do that screw. And then you don't want to overdo screws. So, the, so there's two Phillips screws here. This is for that mounting mechanism. I don't think they go to the main board, or they don't. They go to the case, but maybe they do. So you don't. But that's the thing is you got to go through and you got to figure out. Okay, right, so I got those screws. Where are the other? I guess these screws do go down to the motherboard. Okay. That's the thing is you don't want to take out too many screws because anytime you're dealing with electronics, the more parts you pull off, the more things you might break. And then sometimes the screws that you don't think are important actually are important. So we'll take these off. Okay, put that to the side. Can I pull off the... Oh. <laughs> there's still something... Oh, there's a screw. See, this is what I'm telling you. There's another screw right there. All kinds of random screws in these motherboards. Okay, now I think I can pull it up. Unplug the speakers. So there's little speaker wires up for the front. There's another kind of fan wire. Controls the speed of the fan. That comes up to the front. And now, can we pull this thing out? Still connected to something. Oh, this is, I'm not even joking. Like you sit here and you're like, where? Where's the screw? I thought I, I, I did that one, right? Or was I talking too much when I was doing this one? I thought I did that. Okay. There we go. So we got that. So that screws out. And that screws out. Okay. So now we got the screws out. And then we got to figure out how to get this thing out. So there we go. And now knock off the screws. <laughs> knock all the screws out of there. And there we go. We have a nice, pretty, beautiful motherboard right there. This is where the RAM slots are. This is where the CPU goes. These are the expansion, PCI Express, PCI and such. 
This is the uh, the SATA hard drive controllers. Again, you got the back stuff. You got all that kind of stuff. So there we go. We got the motherboard out. We can put that to the side. And then we can figure out how the hell to... <laughs> like, no, seriously. I'm going to take these apart. Take, take these out. Like, no, no, seriously. How the hell does the... Uh, the power supply come out of this thing. Why I like doing videos like this is you you can see you can you can see and you can hear the frustration as I say no, but I don't understand. The damn thing should come out. Oh wait a minute. Oh oh you bastards. Oh you b oh. I thought this was just a tab. I thought that was just a tab. See how this this is marked with a little blue thing. So at least you know that right there. That's not a tab. That's a lever. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's that's the real. That is the reality of disassembling a, a PC for you. I swear to you. I mean, you look at that. You don't realize that that's a little button thing there. Uh, but in fact, it's a little button thing. So we, now we pull out the uh, the power supply. As you can see, this is kind of a non-standard power supply. This is one of the issues that you deal with uh, whenever you're dealing with enterprise equipment, again, from Dell or Lenovo or anything like that, is normally when a power supply fails, it's very easy to replace a power supply. You just go to Newegg, pay your 50 bucks, buy a pretty normal power supply. The thing is, with these types of computers, a lot of times they have like specifically built. It's not really proprietary. To say proprietary means like they own the design. It's not really that they own the design. They just designed it in such a dumbass way that you just can't buy generic knockoffs of it. And so essentially, so instead of buying a $50 power supply on Newegg, you buy a $150 supply from Dell. But that pulls out the power supply for you. We will now put that to the side. And that's really about all you got with the case going on. There is the uh, there's the fan. So we have the uh, the case fan here that normally you're able to pull out. I'm not sure if I should push my luck at this point. <laughs> I've made myself look so incompetent today. Um, does that work? I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's see. Pull that, there we go. Okay, and then we can pull the entire case fan out. So again, so this is the type of thing. So this, like if you look at this, this looks like it's a proprietary fan. But in reality, it's a pretty generic fan that simply, again, gets put in this little cowl. So if this fan did fail, or if you had an environment, maybe you needed a faster fan or something, you should be able to replace that if you wanted to. So you put that to the side. And really, really, at the end of the day, that's all you got. Then you got the little case that's left over. Um, and, and that's it. So that is... That is a gutted computer for you. This is everything that goes in a computer. And again, as I do all this, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this will keep working even after I've, I've ripped it apart. So don't worry. Like there's this, this whole word, there's a word like this concern, like, oh no, if I touch any of this, it's never going to work again. Which, uh, okay, let's, let's be honest. Uh, that is a possibility. <laughs> That's a possibility. But as long as all of the stuff is fine, Again, as long as all, all, the, all the components are, are generally fine, even if you touch it, even if you lick it, even if you do stupid things to it, uh, it'll, it'll be good. It'll be good. But there we go. That is, that is a desktop PC completely 100% gutted for you. So there we go. That was the class on a desktop PC autopsy. I do have to say, there is just something viscerally satisfying about ripping apart a computer. It's just good. You just kind of get your hands in there and you pull all the stuff apart. Now, some people, again, are going to be laughing at, laughing at good old Eli the computer guy and saying, see, see, Eli doesn't really know what the hell he's doing. Look at, look at how much trouble he had of ripping apart that, that desktop computer. And I did think, to be honest with you, I did think, I was like, you know, maybe I'll do a r dry run of taking apart a desktop computer, and then, and then I'll do it a second time, right? And then I'll do everything perfectly. But what I dislike about that, what I, I truly dislike about that is, look, I have... 20 some odd years of tech experience. I mean, my my company when I had it, we built 
I, I don't even know, like a thousand or more desktop computers. We, I mean, at one point we would have 50 computers, you know, waiting to be repaired at any one time. And so even somebody like me that's been dealing with this for years, I swear to you, like ripping apart a computer, you really are. Like some of these things, you're like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't. I took out all the screws. Like, right? There's a screw. There's a screw. Oh, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. And I just want you folks to see that because especially when you're dealing with Dell and Lenovo or any of these manufacturers, they design all of their cases differently. It's it's like not only is Lenovo different than Dell, different than HP, but even with the vendors, you know, Dell, the old Dell Optiplexes are different than these new Dell, whatever the hell this thing is, right? And so literally when you go to crack it open, and you'll be surprised how frustrated you get over. <laughs> I took out the screws to the power supply. Why won't it come out? I don't understand why it won't come out. And the important part, and again, this is where I try to show you is like real troubleshooting routines and really how you do it, is what I've seen is a lot of new technicians will get frustrated, right? If they can't figure out how to do the power supply, they won't knock on it a little bit. They really will pull out the pliers and start ripping things out. And I even had to fire, I had to fire an employee once. Um, the employee was already having issues. Uh, then I brought him in for, for doing retraining. We we're building, we we're building like these 10 computers. And literally I, I went in there one day and he was, he was assembling the computers, but he started snapping off the screws in order to connect the, uh, the, mo the motherboard to the case. And he was like, these, these screws don't work. Oh, this is just ridiculous. And I went over, I picked up, and he had already snapped off like five or six of these screws. I picked up the right size screw that was sitting on his workbench. I put it in, I screwed it into the case and said, okay, we're going to have to have our final conversation. Um, and really, that was, that was it. That's, at the end of the day, what got him fired was, you know, communication skills with the customer. I, we, we, you know, we can work on that. A lot of things we can work on. If you, can, if you can't take that extra few seconds to make sure what you're doing, make sure, like, if, you're, if you feel like you're about to break something, that you're not taking the extra few seconds to verify what you're doing – that, that's at the end of the day, you got to go. And so that's, again, that's what I'm trying to show you. I really did. This was the first time I pulled apart this computer. So as you can see, since I was pulling apart the entire computer anyway, when I got to the part with the power supply where I couldn't figure out how to get it out, that's where I kept moving. I kept working. I kept talking to you folks. I pulled everything else out. And then I went back to the power supply so I could just look just at the power supply. I could focus on that. And that's where I saw that little switchy thing that doesn't look like a switchy thing. Again, and that, that's what you find with design so much. It's so weird. Again, with these big manufacturers, right? You know, again, if they didn't put that little switchy thing in there, fine, whatever, right? But the fact they designed that little push button switchy little thing, but they didn't paint it. They didn't color it in any way. They didn't denote that it existed. So somebody took all the time and energy to design that. And nobody took the time and energy just to put a little 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 scrape of paint or something across it so you know that it's not, you know, it's something that you can work with. But anyways, that, that's why uh, I did this as a one take, essentially, is just to show you what it's really like to rip apart these computers. Because, again, you can have your MCSE. You can, you can be as smart as you like a computer guy and then still sit there like, why won't the power supply come out? I don't understand. I'm looking like a moron right now. And again, again, this isn't too bad. This isn't too bad. Because I'm doing this and I'm looking like a moron in front of you folks. Like literally, it's me. I've got my two chihuahuas here. Once I upload this, all you folks will laugh. Really, this isn't too stressful. Again, I look like a goofball, but it's no big deal. What I want you to understand, again, when you talk about real stress, imagine that same type of thing when you're billing out at like a hundred bucks an hour <laughs> and you've got a CEO going, mm. I'm paying you, and you can't even figure out how to remove a power supply. And you're like, but but I came here to set up your routing to remote access server, and the power supply failed, and I'm just trying to be nice, and oh, I'm going to die, aren't I? <laughs> uh, but anywho, anywho, this was the video on uh, on desktop PC autopsy. As always, I enjoy I uh, hope. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually did enjoy this one. This was kind of fun to do. And I look forward to seeing you at the next video.
I hope this video has been useful for you and you can use the information that I provided to go out and make the world a better place. But please remember that I cannot pay my mortgage with passion. It's true. It's true. I tried to do it the other week and they were not amused. Here's a whole bunch of passion. Can I pay my mortgage with this? And they said no. So if you want to support what I do, whether it's the videos that I do for Eli the Computer Guy, the videos I do for Fail Normal, or even the in-person meetup we do every other week, please think about joining failnormal.com or elithecomputerguy.com. At the end of the day, you know, all the passion in the world doesn't matter if you can't feed your family. And so by supporting me by joining either of those two sites, you help pay for everything that I try to create and allows me to not have to worry about things like sponsors or whatever insanity is currently going on with YouTube.